Hello and welcome. I'm David Lee, a PM on the Chrome Extensions team. And today we're talking about some of the cool things we've done over the past year to improve the extensions ecosystem and some of the ways we're making it easier for you, the developer, to take your extensions to the next level. We'll start by reporting on some of the promises we made last year. Then we'll give a few updates on the recent changes we've made to make the platform and the web store more trustworthy and secure. We'll delve into new and recent investments we've made in web technologies. And finally, we'll talk about cool new features we launched that make extension deployment through the web store easier and faster. We gave a similar update on extensions at last year's I.O., and we're actually going to start by following up on the commitments we made back then. This means starting off by talking about the transition from Manifest v2 to Manifest v3. Last year, we committed to four things. First, we committed to fixing the remaining feature gaps, preventing some extensions from migrating to Manifest v3, and that work was completed last year in Chrome 120. These include improvements to declarative network quest, improved ergonomics for service workers, new web file handlers on Chrome OS, a new user scripts API, and a new tab capture API. Second, we said that we were going to provide at least six months of notice, and we've done that with the updated timeline we shared last November. Third, we committed to be more responsive, and we've done so, and will continue to do so, through things like increased engagement in the extension developer mailing list and through periodic focus groups on targeted topics of interest. We've tripled our engagement on the mailing list compared with the previous year. Finally, we said we would work with the community, and later in this talk, we'll share some of the changes we've made as part of the cross-browser web extensions community group. These together were the four commitments we made last year. We're happy with all that we've done in service of these commitments, and we think we've made good on our promises. Moreover, many of the things we're doing, like engaging with the community or investing in cross-browser efforts, are ongoing, and we will continue them going forward. All right, back to the timeline. Right now, we're happy to see that most of the developers in our community have migrated to the new manifest version. Later on in this talk, we'll go into detail about some of the awesome new capabilities and features you now have access to and can try out. That said, I want to spend some time on what the experience will be for users who still have Manifest v2 extensions installed on their devices at the time of deprecation. This might be because these extensions are ones used in enterprises, where updates need to take into account a slower and more cautious Chrome update cadence. Or they are older extensions that are no longer maintained, but some of their users might not yet have searched for a replacement. The rollout will begin in pre-stable builds of Chrome in June of this year and gradually progress to stable channels. There's a few different pieces to what users will see. The very first thing any user might see is a notice on their extension settings page, informing them that some of their extensions will soon no longer be supported. They will be encouraged to visit the Chrome Web Store to find supported alternatives. For each extension, the store will recommend a set of options that may be a good replacement for the one that will no longer be supported. Next, we will begin disabling unsupported extensions. Users will be informed when one or more of their extensions are disabled. In the event they urgently need to use the extension and cannot find a viable alternative without advance notice, they are still able to individually turn disabled Manifest v2 extensions back on for a while. A few months later, we'll remove the ability to individually re-enable Manifest v2 extensions, and these extensions will be permanently disabled. For enterprises who have enabled the Extension Manifest v2 availability policy for devices in their organization, none of these warnings, notices, or options will appear on those devices. Instead, Chrome will disable Manifest v2 extensions on these devices on the enterprise deadline in summer of 2025. Last year, we also hinted at two exciting projects we were working on, an improved extensions menu and a completely new and redesigned Chrome Web Store. These changes, like most changes we've made in the last few years, have all had a strong focus in increasing the privacy, security, and user trust of both the store and of the extension ecosystem. First, the improved extension menu. We're excited to share that it's about to launch. This improved menu allows users to better see and control the sites and pages that each extension has access to. As a reminder, 
we are not changing any defaults at this stage and merely giving users the ability to more easily change permissions if they want to. You can try out the changes by turning on the flag shown on the slide. In the same vein, last year in Chrome 117, we brought Safety Check to the Chrome Extensions page. Safety Check now notifies users if an extension running on their machine is no longer available in the Chrome Web Store and encourages them to clean up unused extensions. These extensions may be unused, but can still have access to sensitive permissions and put users at unnecessary risk. They can get in the way of users enjoying the web and really impact how the user experiences both the browser and all the other extensions they're running. So this kind of change is a win-win for both the end user and the developers of all the extensions that are maintained and updated. With features like the new extension menu and safety check, you can see how much we value cultivating user trust and safety. We think it's one of the most, if not the most, important duties of an online marketplace and platform, although some of these changes might result in a little more paperwork or friction on the developer's part, they're absolutely critical to creating an environment where users feel confident in installing and trying out new experiences. And speaking of installing and trying out new experiences, we launched a redesigned Chrome Web Store late last year, and the reception was overwhelmingly positive. In addition to the fresh visuals inspired by our Material U design language, the new web store also features new extension categories and improved navigation to help users discover and get to what they want quickly. There's also big and ongoing improvements to search, and it's now at the top of the screen for quick access. Most users and trusted voices felt it was a much needed modern refresh of the store. Many were pleasantly surprised. In terms of numbers, we've seen an over 40% increase in item detail page conversions, as well as other signals that suggest users are finding the right extensions for them faster than before. Naturally, we'll continue to make improvements to the store to ensure that users are aware of the breadth of experiences they can enhance with extensions. In the coming months, expect us to do more to highlight new and trending extensions on the homepage and experiment with different ways of putting a spotlight on the unique experiences that extensions can unlock. That's one side of the investments we're making to ensure that the ecosystem and the store continues to be a trusted and enjoyable destination for users to discover new ways of customizing their browser. Next, I'll pass it off to Oliver to talk about the other side of our investments, namely how we're making it easier for you as the developer to craft high quality extensions. Thanks, David. You've heard a lot about Manifest v3 already, and that represents a significant priority that our team has had this year. It isn't the only thing that we've been working on though. We've always thought of extensions as the web plus more. To have a capable extension platform, we need to make sure new web APIs have great support in extensions. We've made some great progress here over the last year. We added partitioning support to the Chrome.Cookies API. This ensures extensions can continue to access all cookies as more sites adopt the partitioned cookie attribute. We've improved web push support and extension service workers, allowing extensions to receive real-time updates from a server. We looked at how extensions differ from the web and based on this made changes so events can be received without needing to show a user visible notification. We added support to service workers for new APIs like Web USB, Web HID, and Web GPU. We've improved how extensions interact with BF Cache. This is a performance optimization that caches pages when a user navigates so they can be more quickly loaded if the user uses the back and forward buttons. We've also finished adding promise support to all compatible extension APIs. This allows you to avoid using callbacks and to write code in a more modern way. Another priority for our team has been investing in a shared platform. We continue to participate in the Web Extensions Community Group, which now has over 150 members. This includes representatives from Mozilla, Apple, and Microsoft. We shared several API proposals, including the User Scripts API and Reading List API. Other browser vendors in the community contributed significantly to the design of these APIs. We were able to reach consensus on both, and they are now shipping in Chrome. We've also been focusing on improving cross-browser compatibility. One example is improving the handling of unsupported manifest keys. Currently, in manifest version 3, Chrome requires the service worker key in the background section of the manifest, whereas Firefox requires the scripts key. 
Intuitively, to build an extension that works in both browsers, you'd add both. But this would prevent an extension from loading in older versions of Chrome. Following discussions in the community group, we no longer have a hard error in proving compatibility. The declarative net request API is another great example of this. Actions to take on network requests are defined in rule sets, and these are made up of a number of rules. We previously made changes to allow a single extension to use up to 330,000 static rules. This seems to be sufficient for most use cases in the feedback we've heard. However, developers shared compelling cases in the community group that other limits were too restrictive. We took this feedback on board and defined the concept of a safe rule. These rules make up the majority of those used by developers and now benefit from significantly higher limits. This required meaningful changes to our implementation, but we prioritize making those and have since heard positive feedback that these increased limits are making it possible for developers to implement functionality that was previously preventing them from migrating to manifest fee-free. Responding to developer feedback like this is really important to us and something we plan to continue. This year, we've also continued to create new tools and resources for developers. We completely overhauled developer.chrome.com with extensions documentation rebuilt from the ground up. This includes putting Manifest V-Free front and center. We created a new samples page that allows you to search for samples by name and filter by the APIs and permissions used. It's a great way to find examples of how to use a new capability. In our documentation, we share guidance on how to test service worker suspension in Puppeteer. If you're new to testing, we also publish general guidance on end-to-end -end testing with frameworks like Puppeteer and Selenium, as well as unit testing using Jest. If you'd like to learn more, see the automate browser testing with tools and best practices from Chrome Talk. When it comes to publishing an update to your extension, we've been working hard to make the process easier. First of all, we released the extensions update testing tool. This provides a way to see how new permissions requested in your manifest will be displayed to users, which is a common request we heard from developers. It's also a great way to test your transition to manifest v3 or other large updates. In terms of deployment capabilities, there are some exciting changes in the web store developer dashboard too. First, you may have heard that we recently launched support for version rollback. We know you've been asking for this feature for a while now, and we're glad to share that it's finally available. Now, if there are issues with the latest version of your extension, you can quickly redeploy the previously published version without the need to wait for review. Simply go into your developer dashboard and click Rollback. And version rollback isn't the only way we're improving the update process. One upcoming change is specifically for content blocking extensions and developers who make heavy use of the declarative net request API. Developers working on content filtering extensions told us that they change rules used in the declarative net request API frequently. They need a way to make changes faster than facilitated by the review process. So if your extension update only includes changes to safe rules, that's those with a block, allow, allow all requests, or upgrade scheme action, then that qualifies the update to be submitted for an expedited review expected to take only a few minutes. Both version rollback and expedited review for declarative net request only changes are just the beginning. We'll continue to look for other cases where we can offer faster review to ensure that you can bring changes to users as quickly as possible. As you can see, it's been a busy year. We started today by talking about how we're getting ready for Manifest V2 deprecation in June. We hope you feel prepared and have the resources you need, but we're here to help if you have any questions. We shared new web APIs you can use in extensions give them a try. We also talked about work we've done in the community. We shared new documentation and tooling, including how to test your extension using Puppeteer, Selenium, or Jest. Take a look at our guides and consider setting something up if you don't have anything already. And finally, we talked about version rollback, available now, an expedited review which will be available in the coming months. To learn more about everything we've discussed, head to the extension section on developer.chrome.com your home for documentation and guidance related to the extensions platform and the Chrome Web Store. Thanks for watching, and we're excited to see what you build.